everybody. Kylie here with her first sake dog training. I haven't been on in a while, but here I am. So before I jump into today's video, I would like to just point out a couple things that you might notice. One being the name change from Kylie's Canine Bootcamp to for first sake dog training. This is due to two new trainers being added to the team who I love dearly and have been close with for quite a while now. And they're pretty much like co-owners because while they do training and stuff, they've helped me in a lot of ways with my business and I wanted them to be included so it wasn't just focused on me as the trainer since I now have two other people on. So we collectively decided to pick this name and now it's going to be for first sake dog training, which I love that name anyways. You may also notice my voice being kind of scratchy or me kind of coughing. I'm getting over a sickness. I'm not sick anymore. It's just my throat is drying out a lot faster than normal now. My hair may be another thing that you notice. I dyed it. That's all. Um, I may look a little bit puffier than usual. It's been a rough couple weeks. I've just been hit with every illness possible over the last couple weeks. And you may also notice that I haven't been on here in like six, seven months, maybe longer. Um, there's just been a lot of stuff going on. So if you really want me to dive into that, I can. But if you're not that worried about it, I'm not worried about sharing it. So, anyways, today we are back with a breed video, Dobermans as service dogs, and what my opinion on that is. So basically what this will be is I'll give you a little bit of fact about the breed, a little bit of opinion about the breed, and tell you what my opinion as a professional trainer is overall when it comes to them as service dogs. Do I think that they're a good candidate? Before we really jump into this, let me give my usual disclaimers. Please do your own research. Again, this is going to be a mostly opinionated segment. So it's really just my professional opinion and some facts about the breed. But please go and still do your own research before you go and just whip up a Doberman and take it. Another disclaimer, I don't care what breed you use in service work. Obviously there are unicorns in nearly every breed I've now seen a Russian bear dog as a service animal, so I've seen it all. I'm not that worried about it. I personally use a mutt as a service animal. I really don't care what you use. This is not to offend anybody. None of these videos are. It's just my professional opinion on does this breed as a whole, typically, if fit to standard and norms of the breed, do they work that great for service work? And that should be everything for the disclaimers. If I think of something else throughout the video, I'll throw that in. So let's get on to the Doberman. First, some basic facts about them. The AKC ranges them from 60 to 100 pounds, females being on the lower end of that, males being on the higher end, as usual. Height-wise, which is measured up to the shoulder, or the withers. I don't know what it's called on dogs. I'm blanking right now. I'll correct it later. Um, they, they range from 24 to 28 inches. Again, females on the smaller end, males on the larger end. And their average lifespan is 10 to 12 years. This is all from AKC. Which means this would all be standard, the size and weight. So the weight and size, that's from the AKC website. That's the standard. Your dog should be within that standard if you go to a reputable breeder and all their dogs should be within that standard. When it comes to age, I mean, that's what AKC lists, but that doesn't necessarily mean your dog can't live longer. There's nothing against your dog living longer in the rules. So if a breeder's dogs are living longer than this, that is amazing. You should definitely go with that breeder. If they're living shorter than 10 years on average, nope, don't go to that breeder. So overall, Dobermans are kind of a larger breed with larger breeds and with any breed that comes with health issues, but especially in larger breeds. Like bloat, the Doberman is a deep-chested breed, so they are one of the breeds that are going to be prone to bloat. 
there is a surgery called gastroplexy. I might be saying that wrong. It's my bad. Um, I know that it is commonly practiced in Dobermans to prevent bloat from killing the dog. It keeps, uh, they go in and they tack the stomach up so that it can't flip. I'm assuming that would be an option in Dobermans as well. So I would talk to your vet and your breeder about this and see if that is an, I, a good idea for you and your dog. They are also pr prone to Von Willebrand's disease. I am sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm also diagnosed with this disease. And the two doctors that I've seen about it have pronounced it differently. So I usually just call it VWD. Basically what it is is a bleeding disorder or clotting disorder where you're gonna bleed more than a normal person would or in this case, a normal dog would. They're also prone to hip dysplasia like many other large breeds, unfortunately. There's nothing really to prevent that. There are some things that you can do. Talk with an orthopedic vet specifically about what you can do to try to prevent hip dysplasia as much as possible. Another thing that they are very sadly prone to is DCM or dilated cardiomyopathy, um, which basically means their heart is enlarged. This does come with pretty serious uh, side effects for the dog's life. Um, so look into that if you're thinking about a Doberman. Again, another breed prone to PRA as well, progressive retinal atrophy. It's a eye condition. Eventually they'll go blind from it. Do your research on that as well. Um, and then albinism and hypothyroidism are the last two things that the AKC lists as things that they're prone to. Um, do your own research if you want to know more about these side effects or the health effects when it comes to any of these diseases. So with the health issues out of the way, I will now read a list of what the National Breed Club for Dobermans recommends for health testing. So before I read this, this is for reputable breeders. If you're a reputable breeder, you will at least do this testing, if not more. More is better to prevent you from breeding dogs that are unhealthy or carrying genetic traits that we don't want. Um, they want these tests done before a litter is born. So they want it done on the parents and they want the parents to test clear or high, depending on what it is. Um, test well on all of these tests before even thinking about breeding the dogs. And that is one of the many things that you can do to see if a breeder is a reputable breeder. Do they follow chick standard or national breed club standard of health testing for the parents prior to breeding? And do they breed at an appropriate age, which would be whenever that breed fully develops? Ranges from 18 months to three years um, in most between the different breeds. So the Doberman National Breed Club recommends cardiac exam, a hip evaluation, thyroid evaluation, ophthalmologist evaluation, and a Von Willebrand's DNA test. If you'd like to know more about what that means, I will link the Doberman, um, National, Breed, Doberman National Breed Club in the description. You can go on their website and they'll tell you more about the health testing. Um, but this is the minimum of what a breeder should be doing health testing wise to make sure that they are breeding the healthiest puppies that they can and to improve the breed that they're breeding. Now, the when it comes to temperament, AKC describes the Doberman as energetic, watchful, determined, alert, fearless, loyal, and obedient. And I can agree with every single one of those. Every well-bred Doberman I've met has been on par with this. And they're absolutely sweethearts of dogs. I love working with Dobermans. They are super fun, super intelligent, so willing to please. So even the backyard bred ones, they're just so smart that their issues, they matter. I don't like that they have these issues. I don't like that somebody chose to breed dogs irresponsibly, but I still love working with the dogs. Now they are prone to aggression towards other animals, which basically means a prey drive. Just a reminder that cats are considered prey to dogs, so cats are included in that. They are not the worst when it comes to prey drive, but they definitely don't have a low prey drive as a general consensus. Um, 
and normally if a Doberman, at least a well-bred Doberman is raised in a house with cats, they'll be just fine with cats. Um, they do tend to be more dog selective or tolerant if they're not dog social. They're not generally going to be outright dog aggressive when well-bred. Uh, one thing that I've noticed with the Dobermans that I've worked with is they do tend to be quite a sensitive breed emotionally and physically, at least in some of the backyard bred dogs. Uh, emotionally sensitive, I would say, is pretty consistent throughout Dobermans. Um, and basically what that means is you want that confidence, you want that fearlessness, as AKC says, but they may be more overreactive to harsh training methods that are outdated like alpha dominance theory um they're probably not going to put up with that or if they do they're going to immediately shut down they're more sensitive in that manner i would also say they're more sensitive to their handlers emotions than some other breeds i have also met quite a few that are physically sensitive granted this is primarily due to skin issues and a lot of these dogs um Things like mange or just poor fur health, um, dandruff, allergy issues, things like that that may cause some sensitivity when you're touching them. I don't know that this is necessarily an issue in well-bred Dobermans. I really couldn't tell you. Um, I don't get to meet that many well-bred Dobermans. Unfortunately, I think I've only met three. I think I've only met three well-bred Dobermans. I can't think of any more than that, and none of them were sensitive to touch, um, but I can't really say as a whole that they're sensitive to touch, um, but at least a lot of the ones with health issues are, and ones that weren't socialized very well are more skittish when it comes to being touched. And once again, you have legal issues or housing issues slash breed bans. In the U.S., service animals must be allowed in housing. However, the FHA makes an exclusion if it's going to cause undue hardship on the landlord and if the landlord's insurance is going to raise their prices or drop them as a client, then that would be a reasonable um, denial of your accommodation because um, it's putting undue hardship on the landlord. Now, with all that said, um, my overall opinion is I have seen plenty of Doberman service dogs and I love the breed as a whole. I think they're gorgeous, intelligent, fun to work with dogs. I would not all recommend them for first time handlers, especially for owner trainers. I would not at all recommend them to first time owners who are wanting a pet dog because while they're a really great breed, and they're generally an easy breed once you have a handle on how to take care of a dog and how to do all these things right. They are not going to be forgiving if you mess up. They are not a forgiving breed. They do not forgive and forget like a Labrador or a Golden Retriever might. Um, a Doberman, no. I, I don't see too many that are super forgiving, especially when you mess up in training or socialization. So... Overall, I would not recommend them at all to first-time handlers or first-time owners, uh, especially if you're both a first-time dog owner and a first-time service animal handler that is training your own dog. No, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, however, if you have a little bit of experience, especially if you have experience with Dobermans as pets and you're wanting to start using one in service work, I really don't care, as I said in the beginning of this video. I think if you have a dog that you think is going to work, go for it. I would not recommend going out and buying a well-bred Doberman with the intention of service work, um, especially with how expensive well-bred dogs are. They're that expensive for a reason. Obviously, it's quality, but if you can't afford to get another dog when that one may very well wash, um, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't know if I said this earlier, but a Doberman is another breed, especially with the health issues they are prone to. I would not recommend getting anything other than a reputably bred Doberman. Obviously the ones in shelters need rescue and they would be great for pet homes who are 
expecting to be dealing with those kind of health issues and temperament issues but when it comes to service work it's just not a risk that you really would want to take with a breed like the Doberman. So like the Rottweiler, I'm once again going to say reputable breeder and I'm going to be honest in all of these breed videos, I'm going to say go to a reputable breeder above all else for service work, especially either go to a shelter where you can get a dog through a reputable organization or go through a reputable breeder or get a dog that's being rehomed for a cheap price, like $100. That's a reasonable rehoming fee and not a breeding fee of $1,500. Never buy those dogs off Craigslist. Those are absolutely backyard bred dogs. <laughs> so overall, like I said, again, I don't really care. I think it would be really cool to see more Dobermans um, working and service work. However, I don't think it would be the best idea on the planet if you don't completely know what you're doing uh, when it comes to dogs in general. There's a cat playing with a ball if you hear that. Um, if you don't completely know what you're doing with dogs in general, or if you don't really know what you're doing when it comes to training for service work, because you're gonna have issues. So overall, like I've said, I don't really care what you do, but if you have experience with Dobermans especially, and you know what you're doing with dogs and training for service work, I see no issue with going for a Doberman. I would not recommend them to first time handlers though, especially if you're a first time owner and a first time handler. For service work and your owner training for the first time it's just not a good combination it's a lot of first times to be working with a doberman they're not very forgiving um again my top recommended breeds are going to be lab in the number one spot golden in the number two and if you want an extra large breed new finland would be my number one but there are other extra large breeds that should theoretically do great and service work it's just health issues that kind of stop them from being used a lot in service work overall if you're gonna go with a Doberman though, please go to a reputable breeder for service work. That's gonna give you your best chance. It is gonna be hard to find a reputable breeder who will give you a Doberman for the purpose of service work, um, but there's gotta be some out there. Don't expect them to give it to you for free though, because that's just rude. They spend a lot of money on their dogs. Pay the full price. Pay the full price like everybody else. Um, I know it's expensive, but it is so worth the quality of dog that you're getting. Not saying that mutts or shelter dogs or backyard bred dogs aren't good dogs. It's just you're getting a lot more guarantees with a reputably bred dog. And that is something I'd be willing to pay for. And with that, we're ending the Dobermans. Let me know how you guys like this kind of style. I kind of went over the facts first and then dove into my opinion. Um, and kind of touched on my experience in the middle. So... Maybe this will be the best version of the breed videos. Let me know. Uh, also, let me know if you're one of the people that have requested pit, pits or pit bulls. I've tried to respond and say, like, what do you mean by that? Because there is the American Pit Bull Terrier, which is the only breed with pit bull in the name. But there's also what most people would call a pit bull, which is so many different breeds and a lot of breed mixes. So I can't really do a video on pit bulls when it comes to this, if you mean just anything with a blocky head. I can do a video specifically on American pit bull terriers or specific bull breeds. So if you're one of those people, let me know in the comments if you would like an American Pit Bull Terrier video or if you're wanting other bull breeds. Just let me know the specific breeds because I can't really do a video on just Pit Bulls as a generalized term. Um, I also cannot do videos on mutts, unfortunately. While I have one and I work one, there are way too many unpredictable factors when it comes to mixing breeds or mutts. Um, you never know what the puppies are going to show. There's no standard for them. They're kind of all over the place. So I can't really do a video on specific breed mixes. I could do a whole video on, on mutts as a whole, um, but unfortunately that's gonna be mostly opinion and some fact about just mixing breeds in general and genetics, I guess but that would be it. Um, 
I can't really go off of any standard because there is none. <laughs> um, so let me know in the comments. If there's any other breeds that you'd like me to go over when it comes to would this breed work in service work? What's the probability in my opinion? Or if there's just breeds that you'd like me to go over without thinking about service work, let me know in the comments. Please give me specific breeds though, not mixes or a generalized term for a certain look. Um, and yeah, that's it. So let me know which style you've liked the best so far, the Husky video, the Rottweiler video, the Doberman video, so that I can get a better idea of how you guys would like me to do these. Um, and leave breed suggestions in the comments. As always, you can always ask for certain training videos, but be aware there's going to be quite a while of a wait because I'm redoing old training videos right now. <laughs> so until I'm kind of done and through with those, um, any new training videos will be pushed back. So, I'm not sure how often I'm going to be posting, but I will see you next time I make a video. Bye.